feel like you're the moon I feel like I'm the one I wanna get numb All right, I'm actually off on a Tuesday. I got a pretty exciting thing I'm doing later. You will see when I get there, but I've got errands to run and I really have been craving a cheddar biscuit from Sunflower. So we're gonna pop in here and grab some breakfast before we start our day. Well, my skin was behaving, but this week I decided to stop. So um, I, I really prefer the patches from um, Amazon. They are linked on my Amazon uh, page. But I've been trying different ones, but I, I've always wanted to try the Alba all natural plant based, you know, skincare stuff. So I'm gonna give this a try and see how it works. All right, so I did get the peach tea with boba, it's made with a uh, non dairy um, creamer. And I had them add the boba. It was really good. I had a little extra sweet. Delicious. Okay, I'm headed into Mar Marshall's. There is this Steve Madden purse on TikTok that's gone viral. And I've never been able to find anything anywhere that's gone viral on TikTok. But I want to see if I can find it because it's really cute. I think it was like 20 bucks. We'll see. not seeing it okay well they do have steve madden bags but it's not the ones not the one i'm looking for uh, um, kind of looks like this kind of shaped like this but they have all these vibrant colors and of course they don't have a hair okay so i tried So I thought I'd pop into Target and check out their shoes. Um, this is not my favorite Target location. They don't really have a lot here, but I had to go to the bathroom, so I stopped at this one. Uh, oh, now those purple. Oh God, I don't even have a purple bag, but I need a purple bag. So I really want to shut up. Oh my god, I need those too. I came actually just to look at these, but I'm kind of loving these. Alright, let me try them on real quick. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm getting them both. I love it. They, they look just a lot, but the heels are different, so. Look at me being all social this month. I know. I'm uh, headed back to Neiman Marcus. We're doing a uh, Women's History Month event. Uh, the mayor will be on the panel. My friend Ohavia will be hosting. I'm excited, but here's my quick outfit of the day. Feels okay outside, but I know it's gonna get chilly, so I will take a sweater. Um, top is old, it's from Chaus. Chaus is from Belk. Um, pants, they're like, it's supposed to be capris, but they're caprants on me. They're from Target. Shoes are from Buddha. I think I got them at Walmart. And since red is the color of spring, wearing my Michael Kors Hamilton scarf it was a gift from Michael Kors so I just wrapped it around it yep. all right so they've got everything set up upstairs we're back where we were last week I'm um, very early but you know my anxiety history month we are gathered here today to celebrate women writing their own stories. Nima Marcus is a female-founded, female-majority workforce that outpaces the U.S. population in racial and ethnic diversity. In 1907, Carrie Marcus, 
Carrie Marcus Neiman, co-founded Neiman Marcus 13 years before she had the right to vote. She was a pioneer. She broke every glass ceiling that you could ever imagine. She and her uh, husband and brother, Herbert Marcus, had $25,000 in 1907, and they were deciding how to invest their money, and their two options were to open a dry goods store on 1618 Main Street in Dallas, or to invest in this little company known as Coca-Cola. <laughs> so, I think their investment paid off considering that Neiman Marcus has been around since 1907, which I think is really incredible. Carrie was elected as the chairman of our board of directors, an impressive feat with women in board chair roles remain, remaining at a low 6.7% today. We remain a female majority organization from the boardroom to the sales floor and 60% of our senior management compromises our female representation throughout the company. Neiman Marcus outshines their peers with more than double the industry coverage. Here at Neiman's, we support women-owned brands such as Veronica Beard, Allison Olivia, Stella McCartney, Versace, Carolina Herrera, Chanel, Walters Faith, and Tori Birch, just to name a few. Championing women in our communities through partnerships Neiman Marcus has proved itself to be a premier destination for luxury fashion and goods along with superior service. And innovators inspiring change for this generation and the next to be a positive force for change. And I could not be more thrilled with the panel that we have put together this evening. Um, unfortunately, one of our panelists did have to bow out at the very last minute. Mayor Vi Lyles had a scheduling conflict and apparently running the city takes precedence <laughs> over coming to Nima Barbers. Um, but I know that she sends her deepest regrets that she could not be here this evening because she was really looking forward to being part of this panel. So we're hoping that we can get her back for a future event. So I'm going to turn it over to Ohavia Phillips, who is our moderator, and she is gonna take us through our panel discussion. In arena host for our Charlotte Hornets, and I literally get to travel and do what I love, especially having impactful conversations with women I love and respect. I gotta tell you all, I am so happy to be here, particularly moderating this panel, because each and every one of these women I love, adore, respect, severely revere, and I got to hug two of them after two years of being in the pandemic. So I'm so very honored to be here and thank each and every one of you for being here. On behalf of Neiman Marcus, thank you all so much and let's get to it. Sessional Philanthropic Strategy Executive of Bank of America. Can we get a round of applause? Um, in the middle, we have the beautiful, impeccable Miss Sonia Barnes. So she is internationally, an international certified life and wellness coach for senior executive women and she just styles and profiles. Give it up for Miss Sonia Barnes. And last but certainly not least, we have the beautiful Liz Hilliard, creator and owner of Hilliard Studio Method. Give it up for Liz. What are the driving passions that set you on your path? Well, Ohavia, first things first, what an amazing room to be in. I have missed all of y'all. All y'all, I have missed you. Um, and so grateful to be here. Christine, thank you uh, for creating this space for such extraordinary women. And um, passion and purpose, you know, I am so unbelievably blessed that my personal and professional, and I think this is a theme that will carry through this panel, are identical, right? I mean, I am called to this work of philanthropy. Yeah. And um, I want you to say it with me, I am a philanthropist. Yes, I am a philanthropist. Um, so often we have an image in our minds of an old white guy sitting in a dark wood paneled conference room dispensing of his billions. Um, that by the way, we made for him. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. And that's just not the reality of giving today. Giving increasingly is fueled by women. Yeah. Passions that set you on your path. So first of all, thank you, Ohavia, finally. Nice to get that hug after two years. And thank you, Christine. We were talking, we've known each other 17 years. Wow. And these ladies, of course, are my good friends and colleagues. So 
Um, and thank you all for coming out on a it's Thursday night. Thursday. Yeah, all right, what's today? <laughs> um, some of my driving passions are, most of you know me as an image consultant, and I did that for 20 years, and it's really at the core of who I am. But at some point, I needed to shift. I tell people, I was like Oprah. You know, when she left talk show TV, people were like, what's she going to do? Well, Oprah's doing Oprah. So I am very passionate about women and lifting women up for the possibilities that they have. Like the word impossible simply says I'm possible. So I'm about lifting women up so that women can. What are the passions that sit you on your path? Oh, I've got no passion at all. I've got a passion for everything. Yes. Um, first of all, I love being on a panel with you people. One of my favorites, we just had a great time in January and Diane and Sonia. Um, my driving passion has changed over the years and it started with being one of the most insecure, disempowered, what I thought to be people on the planet. I don't know if we've all had a moment in life where we all went, I'm just not as smart or I'm not as good or I'm not as worthy as these people around me, even as a small child, as a teenager, as a person brand new in work. But I took my weakness and I drove it into the success that I have today. So I have a business, it's called Hilliard Studio Method. Thank you for mentioning it. And uh, we're in all 50 states virtually and 26 countries virtually. And we're, we made it through the pandemic, which I talked about today. This is literally the anniversary three years ago of when my business was shut down for about a year powering wherever you are, no matter what station in life, no matter what age in life, or whether it's fitness or it's just asking you to own your own space. So I couldn't be, ha I'm up here with some players. These people are serious. I'm pleased to be amongst them and I'm pleased to see everyone in this audience. So thank you for inviting me. Right, it's like we always reinvent ourselves, we make so many pivots, and we do it gracefully as we do. So I want to start with you, Liz. What is the best risk you've ever taken? <laughs> you mean besides writing the article about coming out at 64? Yes. <laughs> get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Uh, there's a guy in the audience, Felipe, came up to me and I said, he, I said I'm not gay. He goes, Liz, Liz, you're with a woman. It makes you gay. <laughs> anyway, um, okay, yeah, risk. Business, business risk, uh, I think we take risks every day. Yes. Um, the, every time you take a risk, you, you achieve something you didn't know before. Whether it's how, how to fail properly and beautifully, or wow, that worked. And the biggest risk I ever took really was yeah. Even as, at an old, as an older person, uh, choosing to live my own passion. Now that was not choosing to live a passion that was going to hurt and destroy other people's lives, but yeah. having the wherewithal to say, I can empower people around me by modeling the behavior of becoming who I actually am and lifting those people up as well. And I'm, in talk I'm talking literally about my own family. Yeah. So. If that story of, of us taking risks, whether it's in business, it's in friendships, every single day in business, I take a risk. I take a, all, every time. But if we, oh, I have a few. <laughs> so the best risk I've ever taken was first quitting my corporate job 23 years ago. Was it 23, 23, 23 years ago? That was huge. Not knowing anything and people had no idea what I did. And I was like, okay, here we go. So there's several on that. And then I would say the second one was probably in the last year or so when I decided to rebrand myself. And I thought, Lord have mercy, people know they're gonna keep calling me for them clothes, and they do, and that's fine. But um, was to rebrand myself because I was like, oh, how do I do this? You know, I'm not quite sure. But I agree with Liz, like as a business owner, we take risks every single day, people being uncomfortable. So that's how I kind of live by it. You know, these risks in life, in business, and in love are yeah. all the risks. Like, it's all those decisions. Yeah. And when I left practicing law, 
after 19 years, like I was the least likely person to be practicing law after five years, uh, right? <laughs> and like, and dismantled the practice that I built, right? Representing tax exempt organizations. When I moved to Charlotte in 2000, like nobody did that thing. Yeah. They, they kept sending me to estate planners. I'm like, no, no, I'm a corporate and tax lawyer for an industry. My industry is nonprofits. And um, I gave up my law license. Woo! Oh, that's a thing. That's a thing. That is a thing. I worked hard for that thing. Um, and you know, what's the worst thing that happens? Yes. The worst thing that happens is I go back to billing my time in six minute increments. That ain't never going to happen. Never going to happen. Thomas's job, she's amazing. Have her on this panel next year. Extraordinary. My job is I sit on our foundation and endowment investment management platform. So we manage um, assets from 25 million to a billion dollars for charitable institutions across the country. So it's family foundations, corporate foundations, community foundations, and endowments for every organization making the world a better place. Um, whether it's you know arts and culture, education, the environment, healthcare, fill in the blank. And my team um, that I lead nationally provides advice and guidance around their strategy. So we're like a McKinsey built only for charitable organizations. So I get to be a muse to billionaires and helping them figure out where to give their money. I also overcome setbacks when they happen. Or give us an example of a setback and you just made it an opportunity. Oh, you all. <laughs> So I'm very blessed to have an incredible tribe of friends. Yes. And I have like two or three in the audience who I've known for 30 plus years. And I call them, because my husband's like, I'm not, he's not being paid. 36 <laughs> years up together and he's not being paid, but okay. But um, I do have a great tribe of friends that I, I go to. I get it all out and I literally, like I do my clients, I'm like, I'm gonna give you 24 to 36 hours, get it out your system and move on. I mean, because you can get stuck in the wallow. Yes. And you know, obstacles and setbacks come all the time yes. as an entrepreneur. And you just kind of get comfortable being uncomfortable. Yes. But when I really have a moment, I know who to call. Yes. So having a true tribe of women who support you, regardless, is priceless. Yes, the winning side is so important. Thank you for that. Liz, I'm gonna ask you the same thing. How do you overcome obstacles and create opportunities? Um, that is my best, that's my business. Yes. The obstacles, the thing about this working out, think about how hard it is to maybe do a push up. It, it's a simple thing, but it, lo it looks simple, but it's a very hard thing. You, you overcome the obstacle of I can't to I will do what I can. Yeah. And when you do what you can and you do it to the edge of your best, then you, you improve. You, you create a better space for yourself. And you know, the way I overcome obstacles is just like everything else. I attack it first, firsthand. Yeah. Um, the obstacle of closing a studio, the obstacle yeah. of getting, and I wanna to speak to marriage just for a second yes. because I was married for 37 years. And I wanna say I had a really great marriage. Um, that the obstacle was that we had both allowed ourselves to let it go. And so we could have decided to be, you know, mad about it or to be, you know, stay in it and fight it out to the end, as you know, he used to say. And I, and I would laugh and we both realized it was true. But those obstacles, whether they're in your relationship or they're in your business, if you will meet them head on and you will see them and you'll breathe in them and you will and you'll be with them and you'll walk slowly through them yeah. and feel them, they will become the greatest teachers, not just the greatest teachers, your greatest friends. Your obstacles are your greatest friends. The obstacles in my business has, made, has led us to the success we have today. The obstacles in my personal life have, have led me to a joyous, happy life that I can share with my friends and, and people around so obstacles are our blessings yeah. if i sure. <laughs> let's see an obstacle like that sure was it i love that i like to kind of tag on to that um so in talking about love and marriage so we celebrate 36 years yeah. next week and Be i careful, will tell 37. you i know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i love you and i'm <laughs> I do think that in love, like I married young, like Diane, I think we've talked about this before that, 
you know, it's ebb and flow, yeah. you know, it is ebb and flow. And at some point when an obstacle comes, I think for me, it is making a decision. And so deciding versus like, oh, you know, um, if it doesn't work out, I'm like, you have to decide. Yeah. So as an obstacle comes, you decide, are you in it? And it, you know, you're in it. And it Friends, happens. right? I mean, just the amazing, amazing friends. And I am blessed with many. I mean, I really feel so fortunate in that regard. But I also want to call out a very special group of girlfriends that I have in the room today. And this is a personal board of directors, Uber, forum, accountability partners, um, fun creators um, group. And like, you're here, raise your hands. I love y'all so much, right? <laughs> I looked all around my universe and I'm like, who? And I breathe it out. I breathe in his love and I breathe it out. And those little mantras over and over and over again, it's like medicine, this meditation. It's really powerful. It's we're told allyship is important in C-suite and we're told pull up the next woman if you, if you don't see your sister at the table or in the rooms. I would love to hear from each and every one of you. And I'm gonna start with you, Diane. What else do you think is needed to ensure that women thrive in their industries and in their communities? Ohavia, we need more of this. We need more of this. When we are in the room together, we're getting to know each other, we're locking arms. I mean, the right time to make a friend is before you need a friend, right? And so really nurturing and deepening these relationships is, this is the key. It's not all on you, Christine, but we'll come anytime you invite us. Anytime, we'll be here. We'll, yes, we'll be here anytime. But there are so many amazing women's organizations in Charlotte, right? We can ensure that women are thriving in their industries, boardrooms, all the things, and in communities. I always say reach one, teach one, each one, like reach one and give back. Yes. So I have some of my women who I've helped along the years in styling, uh, Paulette, Felicia, and so I do believe in, so I think my gift is growing women. Yeah. Like I love to grow women and see people succeed. I love to grow women, like that brings me complete joy. Because one day, like that's gonna be like, quote unquote, a legacy. Yes. So we're not always gonna be here. We're pretty soon, like, we're, I'm almost the old person in the room. Not and quite. so I was like. <laughs> <laughs> that part. But anyway, I do, I do believe in growing women. I do, and in terms of the C-suite and what I do now, it needs to be a safe space, yes. psychologically, for women to express and have the courage to express safely yes. how they feel about themselves and what they're going through on their day-to-day -day lives. Um, this is my layup question. Uh, you asked this at the beginning about passion. Well, my passion is empowering, and I don't use that in the you know, way that everybody, I don't know. It's empowering women, specifically women. I have on the wall of my studio, written in bold letters, be powerful. That can mean whatever you want it to mean, but what it means to me is that I want you, no matter who you are, wherever you are in life, to own your space, to love yourself, and to appreciate that moment that you're in. And to, and when you get a group of women together, guys, you're, you're, you're great people, <laughs> right? I love you, especially you two. And we want you there. But women have an ability to do a lot of things at one time. We Exchange yeah, on that. Yeah, God bless WIE, right? 
Um, and just uh, that beautiful brainchild of Dee Dixon and Stephanie Counts. I mean, like 20 years ago, crazy making. But it's it's to that point, right? And and how um, that diversity makes us so much stronger, right? And it's and it's all the fact that women are able to it, different ages, sizes, sexual, uh, gender, whatever it is. I think we are used to juggling the world. We are used to not being heard, and we are used to having to deal and to run the PTAs and to run the boardroom without the guys knowing we're running the damn boardroom, right? So I think this crowd, this powerful community, and I'll, I would put my life on the fact that you get this amount of women anywhere, you're going to make a difference in this acceptance of one another. I, I'd love nothing more than for somebody that completely disagrees with me to come to me because I want to, I want to find that, that place where we intersect, where we can empower each other. I know we can do it. So I will speak as a black woman, and, you know, for intersectionality. So Charlotte is a diverse city. Um, and I've, I've had a little different experience. I always call myself the odd girl out because of how I was brought up and raised, but I mean, I'm a black woman. I don't care how you slice it, I'm very proud. But I think for some of us, um, Tanya's probably have something to say, but uh, for some of us, it's we have to feel safe and open mm. to have the conversation mm -hmm. because there is a clear demarcation of cultures and a clear demarcation of you know backgrounds for any women. But in order for intersectionality, I think, to work safely, yes. is you have to be comfortable being uncomfortable. That's just really a motto of mine. Like you have to listen to the conversation, take lower your filters, mm -hmm. listen to the conversation, and be willing to be empathetic. You may not understand it, but you need to be empathetic to it. As long as we're on our journey of growth and learning, and so just assume the best intentions and just save space for grace. And, you know, um, <laughs> you know, having emotions and working through all those things. So, what are some problems? Since they are of, of women interacting with men in certain spaces, places, and industries, how do we still keep the essence of woman, but going through our changes, such as hormonal changes, things we can be going through at home, and still show up and show to prove? Look under your seat. There's a card to a Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that. <laughs> so first of all, in the green room, we just had the hormone question in the back. <laughs> I was like, you got to get your hormones in check. It's very important. <laughs> we literally just had that. So for me, I will say that in my generation, we were brought up to go to, you know, go to college, get the job with good benefits, you know, and you know, break the glass ceiling and all that. So I think the network of conversations were to, in order to be successful, you had to be more masculine. Mm -hmm. And yes. so that may have worked for many, many, many years, but the conversation and the climate is changing. So I'm one that believes in exercising your feminine power. Yes. And I believe both men and women have both feminine and alpha power. And so we've been conditioned to hold the feminine power down. And we just have to say, listen, I'm going through something. I need to take the time off, you know, or if you don't have any sleep that night, I need to come in late, whatever. That's who you are. That's what makes you a woman. Would you rather be a man? I don't think so. So what you want to do is walk in that boardroom and take your jacket off because you're hot and you know, talk to people if you want to, but own that you are a woman going through menopause. I am so passionate about helping other women in terms of, um, as we say, lifting as you climb. Yeah. And so I'm not part of your immediate tribes, but you're part of my concentric circle. And so I follow all of you and I'm inspired by all of you in so many ways and you'll never know that by me reading your posts whether it's through LinkedIn or Instagram or Facebook um, so thank you for that and thank you Christine for where are you now the booth. thank you thank you for the for, for pulling this together yeah. and so what my question is for each of you is as um, 
when you think of your concentric circles, who is it that inspires you that may not be part of your immediate tribe, mm -hmm. and why is that? Because again, I'm inspired by people who are not in your inner circle, and who, she asked, who is inspiring to them? I just want to say, really, I'm not sure this will be the exact answer here, but I remember going through a tough time when I was a married woman and I was in my 40s, and uh, life had fallen apart as it does now and then. And the service that you speak of, Diane, I, I volunteered to be a counselor at the Urban Ministry. And I remember walking into my office and I'm like, how do you be a counselor that just show up <laughs> you know, be here? And I remember the, the inspiration that I received from people in need was, it blew my mind. And I know you know more about this than I do, but the visceral, the visceral feeling of helping someone else simply get a meal or get a room for the night or get a bus ticket to get somewhere where they can find their people was one of the most empowering things. And I'll never forget that. And when I start to be sad or feel in, like I'm alone or I need something, I, I reach out. I reach out to a stranger. I reach out, not necessarily to my friends, but someone that just needs a, a look, an eye or a pat on the back or a just, we're going through so much, right? So, <laughs> Kerry Connor, Barr, uh, the CEO, Address for Success. I mean, changing lives. Yep. Right? Well, stand up and wait, please. Please, I want you to know. You do amazing work, man. Uh, we have incredible, incredible service um, to women in our community. And I mean, I will, I mean, I could give you, well, let's have a glass of wine. I'll give you some names and some people I'm following on social media, kind of stalking, who are inspiring me. Um, but I do want to go back, um, you know, Liz, to this point, specifically around the Urban Ministry Center. I mean, it, it's I've, the one thing that I've done consistently in this community before COVID shut it all down was leading Bible studies at the Urban Ministry Center, the upper room. I mean, there's a leadership Charlotte in 2007 and 2008. So organization here. Our service project was to go into a fragile community and you know help them come up with the strategy for something and so that was 2007 and 2008 and there's a, a couple of ladies there Ruby and we still keep in touch and we go to lunch from time to time but they keep me grounded and when I you know in terms of concentric circle I'm still very involved with that community I still keep in touch with those women and they really inspire me. I was like, girl, yeah. you can drive back to Valentine and it's, you know, all is well, but it takes courage yes. to go. It's not uncomfortable for me, but to go into a different neighborhood and immerse yourself in their world and really be present for them. Yeah. And so those women really inspire me. Valuable. And you are not what you do. You are valuable because of who you are. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. You are the lender and not the borrower. And that has nothing to do with finances, where you work and all the things. It's just because of who you are. So I pray that you have been inspired just as much as I have by the women who I stalk on social media. <laughs> and literally continue to show up and recognize that each part of your story, what you've survived, what you are creating, and what you have yet to build matters. Ladies, can we please get a round of applause for Diane? I'm at a loss for words, and it takes a lot for me to be at a loss for words, but, yep. and we are raising money uh, for Dress for Success Charlotte, um, and uh, I would <laughs> congratulations and thank you. I also wanted to recognize the masses. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we can do a little wellness. I mean, What do you yeah, think, Sonia? A clinic? So. A retreat. A retreat. A retreat. Yeah. Maybe an overnight slumber party in the school? A lunch? Yes. 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 Oh. Yes. Oh. Yes. oh. Tomorrow. And ask him for all. Well, that was absolutely amazing and inspiring. Just. Who would have thought? Fashion can just bring you into um, just all of the power that women have.
you know, I've got to go to the bathroom because you know I've got a woman's bladder. But I get to look at this little Versace purse again, which I know it's for a child, but I really, really want it so bad. St. Patrick's Day outfit of the day. Um, the dress is Amazon, shoes, Target, bag, Zimbono, and scarf is Dollar Tree or Dollar 25 Tree now. It's old, but yeah. Oh my god, y'all. So I got um, sent some PR by this. I'm sorry, I don't know why my toilet self flushes randomly. Anyway, I was shocked when I opened it and it came out white. And I was like, oh my God, I can't put this on. I have somewhere to be. And I just kept rubbing it. I thought, well, maybe it'll be like a primer. And it turned from white to an actual color. Like, hold on. Like it, you can see kind of right here. Oh God, it's not. Sorry, I'm horrible. Our hair is white, but it turns this color. It is so crazy. I am mesmerized. That, look, yeah, that's what it looks like. And hold on just a second. Do y'all see that? Like, hold on. Okay, you see this white? I'm gonna have to reapply it now, but look at that. Oh my God, how? That's magical. All right, we're on South End, um, Triple C Brewing. I'm glad I didn't have to say that word. I can't say that word. Anyway, um, Table and Twine is hosting us with their, um, I don't know where to go in, I'm sorry. Um, their Easter dinner preview. So I've taken you to the Thanksgiving and the Christmas. So now we're gonna do the, the Easter one. I don't know where to go in. Is this right? I think so, okay. I need a bed. We're in the one that was literally on the corner when you come in. So every Friday, Saturday night, we would. Yeah. Well, we just got used to all the people the coming trucks. back from. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Part yeah, yeah. yeah. of the chaos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. It's organized chaos, but chaos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they do have the honey glazed ham. I believe this is delicious mac and cheese. This looks like, what is this? Cheesy potatoes with crispy onions. Oh my God. This sounds, oh my God, I'm starving. I love that it's vegetarian friendly, most of it for the most part. And then this is like their, they've got the Mother's Day brunch. Okay, and so this is the items there. too long but just a little bit about table and twine for those of you who have not had our meals before we are a meal kit delivery service based here in charlotte we deliver to charlotte to charleston and to raleigh so we have the carolinas covered we are a kind of a hometown alternative to large meal kit companies like hello fresh we also do parties and uh, holidays you guys have been experienced so today we've got our easter uh, dinner and our easter brunch as well as our mother's day brunch so hopefully everybody got lots of pictures um, we're going to bring the food out shortly, but I want to introduce our uh, chef, Morgan Ripple, who's going to tell you guys about everything you're eating tonight. Yeah, hi. Um, so right over here is where you're going to be eating from. To start with, for your like main dishes, you have a ham with a honey um, mustard sauce, and then you'll have a chicken, stuffed chicken with spinach and feta, and then it has a tarragon cream on it. And then for your side dishes, you have a 
um, homemade mac and cheese, cheesy potatoes, uh, honey glazed carrots, and then like a butter almond uh, green bean. And then you also have rolls and butter. And you should also have some butter on your table as well. And then directly over here in the middle is going to be our Easter brunch. So with that one, you're going to get a parfait kit. You will get um, a salmon platter with uh, smoked salmon with then bagels and cream cheese, onions, papers, eggs, everything to go on those. And then you'll have cinnamon rolls, bacon, and a quiche, which is our traditional quiche that we do, which is a spinach quiche with Gruyere. And then in the far corner is the Mother's Day brunch, which is one of our best dishes that we do is shrimp and grits. And then you'll have um, a broccoli salad with red peppers and onions and cranberries. Um, what else is over there? A quiche is a um, play on like a pimento cheese-ish, ish there. <laughs> like quiche, um, so it actually has tomatoes in it and cheddar cheese, um, and a little bit of caramelized onions. And then you have a blueberry coffee cake, and then fruit salad is gonna be for that. So enjoy, we will be bringing out the food just they're holding the door closed so that it wouldn't be too loud. But yeah, we're very bringing it up right now. Feel free to take plenty of pictures of everything. There's already lights in here sometimes like And then we got carrot cake which I'm not a fan of but this looks so good so I'm definitely grabbing some of this. Or you can do it with or without icing. I gotta have the icing though. So that was a great event. Always great food, great friends. Ohavia and Dennis came in right at the end. I don't think I got a video of them but look at the dog was blooming. All right, of course it's raining. I wanted to show off the new uh, look at Two Scoops Creamery. I also want to go in because they do have um, the vegan cookies and cream. I'm going to try to get a good picture even though it's raining. We'll see. Y'all, this is so good. It's their vegan vanilla cookies and cream. It is so creamy. They make it with oat milk. I'm so excited that they're getting more non-dairy options. Yay! And a pretty new look even though it's raining. <laughs> 